is 12 degrees. We've gone past the weatherman's 11. Now we're heading towards Barbara's 17. My 18 today, I think we're going to get there too. It's going to clear up a little bit. Don't worry about it. Yeah, maybe still a little gloomy, but never mind. That keeps the heat closer to the ground, which means it's going to get warm. It is Wednesday, September 15th. Officially, it is the uh, middle of the week. Let's put it that way. And uh, let me do this. Uh, well, actually, at the moment, I'm talking to a young man, young man, who is actually a teacher. And, uh, well, you know something in this morning's news? Yes, the, uh, well, the, there's 400 cheats. You know, 400% has risen in cheating at university. All the teachers are going, I don't understand what's going on here. And unfortunately, COVID is getting the blame for that too as well. Uh, nice to have everybody along. And believe me, it is an absolute pleasure because today, today, we are going all the way down to Christchurch and we're meeting up with this chappy. Hi, this is Ryan Neville and you're listening to Galaxy 107 FM. Yes, exactly. We're catching up with Ryan Neville. So let's kick it off with a little bit of boogie woogie fever. Ever wondered why when you're feeling high? How you feeling, Ryan? You okay? Doing good. Doing good, mate. Nice. Yeah, it's always funny to hear your songs play back. I haven't heard that song in at least three or four months. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, it's an absolute pleasure to play it. Uh, also, it's a pleasure to play your, your voice drops, your stingers, bro. Oh, look, at any time, any time you want more, more than happy to do any for you. Absolutely. Brilliant, brilliant. And I always want more, bro. Uh, especially when you've got new music out, how about introducing them? Okay, brilliant. All you right, know? I will do that. I'll do some today for you. But and if there's anything particular you guys want me to say, just just um, yell and I'll you know do any of them for you. Okay, well I'll tell you what, uh, you feature a lot hey. in the Tuesday hey, night blues hi, Tim. show. So how would okay. you like to say hi? It's Ryan Neville. You're listening to Galaxy. It's Tuesday night blues or something like that. Ah, perfect. Okay, Tuesday Night Blues, brilliant. I'll do that for sure. Awesome. We've got York, awesome. the party can start, he says. <laughs> and uh, Tim says, hello, my friends. Very, very cool. Nice to have York on board. We were just talking about you, York. Yeah. Believe me, your ears must have been burning. Uh, by the way, thank you for staying up two nights in a row for failed interviews. Uh, first time, not our fault. Unfortunately, uh, Mark had a hurricane or something go through his property. He had to go and check wow. that out. Uh, second time was kind of, well, it's not our fault either because the council decided they were going to chop down a tree right outside our offices. The noise was phenomenal. So it's tomorrow, you've got to stay up late again, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Anyway, he's right. We, we must be good for his yeah. insomnia. Yeah. <laughs> he's a musician. He is. Anyway, let's go to the desk, Ryan, and it's a pleasure to have you back, bro. Hi there, guys. Look, it's always my uh, you know, favourite part of the day when I can chat to you guys. This is great. Good to see you again. <laughs> cool. Uh, York says no worries too, by the way. Um, also, Tim Steinreich, right away in. Hello. Uh, <laughs> nice to have you on board. Oh, uh, no. It's Mark good. is on board well, as well. Mark, that's not good. Yeah. See you tomorrow. <laughs> And the horn section blazing hot As the fever starts to show And you know you gotta go But you will never give up
That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM and for today we're kicking off the interviews. Uh, believe me, it's been a, an issue over the last couple of days, it really has, and i got to apologise to Mark, who is watching right now. Uh, yes, I understand about the hurricane. My goodness, I hope everything's going well there for you and your family, I really do. Yesterday, again, not our fault, uh, the council decided to chop down a tree right outside our offices and then, well, we just couldn't hear ourselves think let alone do an interview, so I apologise for that. But today, we're joined by a good friend of ours, coming out of Christchurch, yes, Ryan Nibbles with us. And Ryan, welcome back to Galaxy, brother man. Thank you so much. Like I said, it's always good catching up with you guys. It's uh, always a fun day when I get to see you guys. Well, you know something? It's the same for us. Re reciprocated, literally, my friend, because uh, uh, it's always a pleasure. We go around the world and talk to people from every corner of the world but it's really nice to catch up with a Kiwi every now and again. Very cool. Nice. And right, right back at you. <laughs> Thank you, my bro. Thank you. Uh, now, at the same time, uh, a good friend of ours, Jorg, is online at the moment, coming out of Germany. Now, we introduced you to him uh, a little while ago, did his uh, TV podcasty kind of thing, if you know what I mean. Uh, and he yep. was very, very impressed with you. Uh, but I... I don't want to get too deep into that right now, Ryan, because I do want to uh, talk about Boogie Woogie Fever first. And uh, Barbara says to me earlier on this morning, uh, it's hard to imagine a blues man feeling happy. Well, you know, uh, the connotation is, a, you know, blues is a good man feeling sad, right? That's right. But I think, it... I, I think Ryan, you're breaking the mould here. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's nice to do something a little bit different and in these kind of crazy times that we're going through, it's kind of nice to be a little bit happier, just to be different. And I know it goes against everything the blues stands for, but, uh, you know, why not do something different? Well, exactly. And believe me, uh, I don't think you need an electric truck to be able to get through this one. I really don't. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, a little you know, get at the Prime Minister, I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> really was. Uh, I, I was talking to a... Um, uh, a guy who sings country a couple of days ago, and I says, you know, here in New Zealand, we're considering actually getting rid of petrol vehicles, literally going full on with the, uh, well, with the battery powered deals. And he goes, I don't know how that would work in America. I really don't. And I went, why is that? And he goes, well, you know, could you imagine, you know, sitting on the back of your electric ute, singing over the rest of your electric ute left you for another woman? <laughs> doesn't quite work, does it? It doesn't. It really doesn't. You know, not, with it, not without at least a jar of alcohol of some sort. Maybe that's, maybe that's the answer. Yeah, yeah. Ele electric vehicles and moonshine. <laughs> what a great mix that'll be. <laughs> an interesting combination for sure. <laughs> uh, here's a question for you. Would you fly in an electric plane? Oh, that could be a wee bit concerning, couldn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the power cord only goes 25 metres. Come on. Yeah, because you, you do question what would happen if the plug got pulled out or they switched off the power. Yeah, it's like a fly with a piece of <laughs> cotton on the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit, little bit concerning. So I'll have to answer, I, I wouldn't. I would say no to, to that, that's for sure. <laughs> well, I, I've got to be honest with you. Yesterday I was watching on the interwebby thing and they've got these um, people mover drones these days. And the things they can do with these things are amazing. Literally, door-to-door yeah. um, -door service. They can land in your backyard, your front yard, anywhere you want, literally. Uh, and, of course, these days, the world is moving towards getting rid of uh, overhead power lines and stuff like that. So it makes it more available to be able to drop in right and, there. Yeah. Front gate, you know what I mean? And you can hold, hold <laughs> up... Really to, one of these things can hold up to 12 people. Wow, that's impressive, isn't it? Isn't it? And one person was showing what they can do with it. They can turn it inside out, upside down. My goodness. I, I, I want one just for the hell of it, to be honest. That would, that would be a lot of fun, that's for sure. It'd be great fun to have one of those. Imagine but, the fun you, you would have. Yeah, yeah. Well, one step closer to the Jetsons, I think. Yeah, look, we are getting there. We are. Look, we've got that big wall uh, TV thing going on now, and, you know? Yeah, exactly. Getting, the, getting there. the only thing we don't have is a, um, a, a robot to do the you know, the housework and the cleaning yeah, and stuff I want like one that. Of those. Yeah, no, the wife won't let me have one of I want those. One. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
It won't be long and we'll have those memory homes that I can see that happening for sure. Yeah, exactly. Me too. You know, maybe in what, 50, 60, 80 I years, something like that, maybe? No. You never know. You never know. I'm looking forward to the day of hoverboards. I, I yes. Want, I want one of those. I always have when, you know, when I saw it back in the movies back in the day, I thought, now that's ingenious. I want one of them. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd be there as well, but um, that's, that looks a whole lot of fun, doesn't it? It certainly does. It really, really does. Now, uh, Ryan, let's get back to the point of Boogie Woogie Fever. We opened up the show with that. So explain this to me. Uh, refresh our uh, audio audience's minds, because I know we have talked about it in the past, but tell me all about the lyrics. So, yeah, so it's a fun song, as, as mentioned uh, before, and of course, I've always sort of liked the whole rock and roll uh, style of music, because it makes you dance, makes you get up, and it's happy, and it's just, you know, a really good, fun story, and um, yeah, and I was actually quite pleased going to, to see you dance to it before, because you're the first person to have danced to this new song, because we haven't been able to get out and actually perform that song live yet, so, 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 so thank you, because it kind of makes it feel like it's a show here, this is great. <laughs> you know, we haven't been able to get an audience, been able to play, so we've been meeting too. We've had the album out for a little bit now, but still haven't been able to go and uh, continue with our shows. But so thank you. <laughs> but, well, I got to be honest with you, bro. Uh, when the mood takes me, and good music usually does that to me. That's basically why I'm a DJ. Uh, and Barbara gives me a lot of stick all the time because we do a thing here called cheer dancing. Literally, you know what I mean. And we're having a great time. Fantastic. <laughs> good to hear. Yo, believe me, if you could only see behind the scenes sometimes, mate, you would absolutely, well, maybe you'd wet yourself laughing because, believe me, it's hilarious. It really is. Uh, but it's all about enjoyment of good music. And Ryan, you are a perfectionist in good music. I've got to be honest with you. Thank you so much for saying that. And it's funny, I must say, even I, before when I was listening back to it, I, my own foot was tapping. Now, for me, that's a good thing because it's can be difficult for me to play my music back. Um, you know, it's just like lots lots of um, songs that are right here. You, you kind of hear it over and over and you're not sure of it and that kind of thing. But I was actually pleased in myself that my foot was tapping along too. So it's a good thing. Very, very cool, bro. Love it, love it, love it. Now, um, I, I want you to explain to me, please, uh, you wish this day had never come. What's the backstory to this? Well, um... Yes, it's kind of a combination of things, actually. It's like a lot of times, I like sometimes to write songs with a wee bit of a mystery, so, you know, you can uh, identify, the listener can identify that to the, in, in their own way. So, uh, for me, I tend not to write personal songs, but um, unfortunately, my wife had a stroke a couple of months back, um, and uh, it inspired that. And my way of dealing with things sometimes is through through my, my music. It's, it's my safe place. So this song was kind of about that, um, like a lot of us in life, you know, sometimes when bad things go wrong, we seriously had wished that day had never come. So it did come a little bit this time from a personal place, uh, but again, it was to give the listener, you know, something to think about, something to ponder um, about, you know, there are times in their life when we do wish that day had never come. We unfortunately all have those days occasionally. You know, times. You, you know, Ryan, and I, I know the backstory to the song, and believe me, uh, I kind of got the idea when I first heard it, but Ryan, i got to thank you for your candour and your honesty on this. I really, really do, because believe me, uh, it makes the song when you know really what it's about. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, well, again, a damn good song. Uh, but in the meantime, let's check this out. Hi, Ryan Neville here. You are listening to Galaxy 107. I love those, Ryan. I really do. I can't help myself. Let's, <laughs> let's break this to the world because, believe me, we have actually been playing this, just not saying a heck of a lot about it, uh, just testing the water to see how people would respond to it. And at the same time, I've got to congratulate you for getting Jorg in Germany to master this particular track. And it's getting a big, big following. People want to know who, what, when, where, and how. So today, Ryan... We're going to release it to everybody. This is it, literally. Ryan Neville coming out of Christchurch, and you wish this day had never come. Love that. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. 
No, that's, that's awesome, mate. That's very cool. Very, very cool. How many cities? Really? That's impressive. 310 cities this morning. Oh, that's always good to hear. Yeah. I'm excited. That's wonderful. Yeah, me too. Because usually it fluctuates between 270 to 290, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, that's, that's excellent news. It's very cool. And uh, Mark, looking forward to meeting you tomorrow. Yeah, I really, it? really am. I know we're going to kick it out of the park. I really do. And Tim, brother man, looking forward to catching up with you. Um, rather amused, though, about your new song. I really am, you know, being a landscaper and you're singing about gardening. For you. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. It's a great song too, Ryan, it really is. Big song, I'd be, be very keen to hear it. Yeah, yeah, I'd give Barbara to send you a copy. Uh, he's a good friend of ours coming out of Canada. Yeah, they know. Oh, lovely. Canada. And is that Mark's interview tomorrow? Uh, Mark is in interviewing tomorrow. He, um, hey, it's been just one of those weird things. We had him booked in for a couple of days ago and a hurricane went through his um, through his area yeah. so he had to get on an emergency flight go and check out on the family as you can understand family always comes first absolutely and uh, so we understood that <laughs> and just as we're gearing up to do an interview yesterday with the uh, with the gentleman council turns up and starts oh, yeah. with so these loud. chainsaws and everything right there <laughs> And they not only did the chainsaws, they had the mulcher going as well. Big industrial mulcher. Oh, good news. <laughs> hey, Jesse, I want to catch up with you, oh, darling. Look, the only thing you when can do you is go out and say, you guys want a coffee? <laughs> well, that's it. That's right. That's all we can do, isn't it? Yeah. Jesse, nice to be yeah, on board. I want to catch up with an interview with you two. So. Yeah, yeah, literally. Literally. Absolutely. I I'll message you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, loving the design of jeans, bro. <laughs> I've always been famous for having ripped jeans. I, I don't know why. Either I rip them myself accidentally or I just keep buying ripped jeans. I don't know what, what happens, but I think every pair I own, and I'm a jean freak. I've got about 20 pairs of jeans, but they're all ripped. Yeah, yeah, believe me. I, I was like that ever since I was a little kid. I used to knock the hell out of my jeans, and there was always the knees that went first. Um, skateboarding when I was a kid, no pads. We're That's it, me too. Yeah, Kiwis. And you have a favourite pair of jeans and you just can't throw them out. Yeah, exactly. Mine were actually red. No. <laughs> no. My mother bought me a pair of red jeans and I've got to be honest with you, uh, over six months or so they turned pink. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, they you faded oh, pink. Lovely. But I'll tell you what, they had so oh. many scuffs on them, they were perfect. Good. <laughs> they yeah. were. Uh, that, favorite jeans. That and a, a set of vans. Are a she didn't pair of know shoes. to put them in salt to set the dye. That's what you do if you don't want them to turn pink. My mum used to wash stuff in a copper. <laughs> So, I'm not kidding, you know, um, put a fire okay. underneath this thing and she'd be boiling stuff up. <laughs> she was a lot of witch in the cauldron. Country she... bumpkin, yeah. A cauldron, that's... Hi, gear. Voodoo. Yeah, right. Uh, voodoo, all right, it was with my clothes, <laughs> usually. <laughs> She's sterilising the hell out of stuff. <laughs> my mum used to be a um, a chef for Bellamy's in Wellington. She, oh, was, yeah. she was the head chef there for about 15 years. Um, way back in the day, I don't know whether you remember um, Norman Kirk. Oh, I do, yes. Yeah, yeah and Jim Bolger and um, also hey, um, uh, nice to meet you. Rawlings, what's his name? Bill Rawlings? That's right, yeah. Well, Bill Rawlings was actually an old school buddy of my father's. Really? Yeah, so we've had politics in our family forever. <laughs> Truly. That's what we talk but, about. Yeah, sometimes. my mother used to be. Uh, this head chef, so she was pedantic about everything she did. Right. You know, yeah. cleanliness, top of the list, literally. I, yeah. Yeah. And she used to boil up in the copper all of these uh, tablecloths and stuff like that for, for work, and she would hand wash everything. Wow. Wow. That. Yeah. That, no, she did. Well, she did. <laughs>
That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM and today we're joined by Ryan Neville coming out of Christchurch. Ryan, which part of Christchurch are you in? So, we're living in Hallsville at the moment. Okay, okay, uh, believe me, I used, I used to be, uh, live up in Cashmere Hills. Oh, I love you, that's just up the road from us, I can see the hills from, from here in fact. Exactly, and believe me, I did my time at Wigram when it was an Air Force base. That's right. Yeah, things have changed there. That's uh, yep, and that's uh, just the hops getting the jump from from our house as well. So, what's it turned into now? Is it housing now? It's a housing area. They've got lovely shops. Just recently opened a uh, picture theatre there, so it's a happening place at the moment. You know, I'd be very, very sad to see that, to be very honest, because I was very fond of the Air Force and being a part of that, and very proud of it as well. Uh, yeah. To, to be very honest, but, so you know. Built there, which is really nice. So they have done done well. They built around it, which has been lovely. So okay, yeah. this is going up everywhere. Yep, yep, absolutely. I understand. That's progress. And uh, well, you know, Christchurch has a tipping point now. Having said that, my friend, you guys have been taking a hammering as far as the weather goes over the last few days. How's things down there, really? Look, it's really uh, nice today. We're looking out, look at the window at the moment and seeing uh, the sun. But yeah, we had a bit, a bit of rain. We had um, some very strong winds last uh, Friday and things. So it's been up and down, I, I must say. But certainly nice to see that uh, spring is on its way and we've, uh, you know, the, the plants are growing. The only, only thing that means we have to get out and, and mow lawns in that now is the, is the downside. But <laughs> it's all part of it, isn't it? Uh, you should see Barbara's place. Her place, I, th I think it looks like a golf course, literally, uh, because it is very very neat and tidy and uh, it's because she's got sheep on it she doesn't mow the lawns or anything like that you know what i mean but, but that's the secret is that i must get some sheep then yeah right. yeah yeah believe me yeah. Uh, and besides uh i i presume you'd be like barbara because uh, she won't let me ride the sheep damn yeah yeah oh you know they're, they're, yeah well you can try well i used to when i was a littler Yes, right. <laughs> My dad used to throw me on a sheet. Yeah, go on, <laughs> ride that sucker. You know, two, three years of age, <laughs> hanging on from grim death. To the uh, yeah. I, I come from um, a, a farming background as well, to be honest. My father was an, an explosives expert, but we also had a couple of farms. You know what I mean? Lovely. So Very I, nice. I was brought up pulling tits. Teats. Teats. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of those words you can't say on radio or television, apparently. Apparently. Uh, unless, yeah. unless it's in the right context, then believe me, we're talking bovine. <laughs> it's clear that one up right now. Uh, Ryan, we are going to have to move on, unfortunately, but please, 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 will you come back again? Are you looking at releasing new stuff? Absolutely. So I'd like to add too that my um, very, very good uh, German friend York, um, I've been very fortunate to be signed to this record label, which is MX Pro Records, and it's been such an exciting time. So York, um, which I know is listening at the moment, is thank you, thank you, thank you so much. He's been absolutely incredible, and I've been so enjoying being um, uh, and blessed being on his record label. He's been mastering my songs like crazy. I've been feeding him so many songs at the moment because I'm so excited. And I'd just like to say thank you so much and thank you always for your friendship and uh, for doing what you do. So and thank you, you all. Uh, believe me, bro, I want to give a big shout out to you as well at MX Pro. And uh, for those of you out there that may want somebody who knows what they're doing and mastering, get in touch with Jorg over there in MX Pro. You won't go wrong, honest. And uh, one... For you, you're, we owe you one. We really do. In the meantime, bro, hang in there. We're going to do something. Actually, we're going to do something a little different. Have we made a cartoon out of you yet? No, but I would love to have a cartoon made out of me. Good as done. Good as done. Because we... guys, thanks once again for having me on your show. It's always a lot of fun with you guys. So thank you for playing my music, and thank you guys for doing what you do. Well, you know, same for you. Without people like you, well, hell, I wouldn't have a job. So please keep going. Right. <laughs> thank you so much and right back at you Grant. thank you okay Brad stay right there but in the meantime let's go with Heavy D and the boys here's Aaron Hall as well now